Thank you to our witnesses for being here today, to both of our former U.S. Senators, to our current member, uh, who happens to be my assigned mentor in Congress. Mr. Womack, I could not have asked for a better one. Thank you. And to our former member uh, as well. I also have a few of my constituents who are here. Thanks for being here today. Our federal debt currently stands at over $33.5 trillion. That equates to a jet debt to GDP ratio of 124%. No one can look at these numbers and believe that the fiscal state of our nation is sound. These spending habits have led to serious economic problems, including inflation at a 40-year high under the Biden administration. This has made it much harder for the Hoosiers that I represent and for all Americans to provide for their families and plan for the future. Like many of us, I came to Washington to help build a better future for my constituents. But passing policies that consistently increase government spending is not building a better future. I fully support establishing a fiscal commission, but we need to carefully design it so that we don't actually do nothing, but we actually change this nation in the course of our fiscal stability. The last thing we need is another report outlining the problem while failing to make any tangible changes. We know what the problem is. The federal government spends too much money without regard to our national debt. Our fiscal house is not in order. And at a time of nearly $2 trillion in annual deficits, it's continuing to get worse. We need to restore fiscal responsibility immediately. Each of you served on one of the previous commissions aimed at taking control of our spending and restoring fiscal responsibility. My question is this, in your experience, what were the biggest hurdles that you faced in implementing the recommendations of previous commissions and what would you recommend that we do differently to ensure that the commission's recommendations actually become law? And I'd like to start with my house mentor, Mr. Womack. Well, you raise a good question, and as I've said a couple of times in my testimony here today, the, the, the challenge with Congress is uh, that we create commissions and, and we create task forces and we look, at, we look at problem sets and we develop potential solutions, and then th there's no real mechanism to give them the force of law. And so as a result of those, they, uh, we look at them, they become shiny objects, and we acknowledge and brag about our great work, and it goes into our resume, but it, is, it, it never becomes you know, the, the law of the land. And so there has to be some mechanism in place that gives it the force of law. Hello, friends. This could change everything. Republicans in the House have officially passed a bill that will cut more than $5 billion in spending. This was passed as part of the Democrats' climate, tax, and health care bill. Many analysts are worried about how this could affect millions of Americans. But some states are in the process of providing low-income residents with rebate checks to help with monthly energy bills. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, please make sure that you do stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway. U.S. consumer spending surged in September as American households boosted their purchases of new motor vehicles and also traveled, keeping spending on a higher growth path heading into the fourth quarter. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program will open for Illinois residents whose utilities have been disconnected or who have received a notice that their utility will be turned off in five days. The program began accepting applications on October 2nd for Illinois households with seniors 60 years old and over, disabled individuals, and families with children under the age of six. On November 1st, Applications will open to those who have received a warning or have had their utilities disconnected. The application will open to other eligible low-income households on December 1st. 
Illinois households must fall below certain income thresholds to qualify. For a household of one, the maximum monthly income is $2,430. And for a household of four, the maximum income is $5,000 under the Help Illinois Families program. Officials will issue $237 million to eligible families in 2024. Applications will be accepted through April 15, 2024, or until funds run out. Last year, the state received more than 300,000 applications for the program, and the average payment per household was more than $1,000. Also in Virginia, applications for payments for the Energy Assistance Program will also close in 18 days. So friends, please make sure to apply if you are eligible. According to officials, House Republicans have already passed a sprawling partisan energy plan. This is the first funding bill approved on the floor since the lower chamber ousted Speaker McCarthy more than three weeks ago. The bill cuts more than $5 billion in spending that was passed as part of the Democrats' signature climate, tax, and health care bill which was approved without GOP support last year. The legislation is unlikely to become law, as the White House has threatened to veto it. But it does represent the House Republican position on energy and water-related issues, as they negotiate 2024 funding with the Democratic-led Senate and the White House. Representative Ken Buck was the only Republican to vote with Democrats against this measure. His spokesperson said in an email that the congressman voted no because he wanted funding in the bill to remain at 2019 levels. It would also cut a program in the climate bill, which is aimed at helping state and local governments adopt climate-friendly building codes. The bill would fund the Energy Department, but the GOP is also eyeing sharp cuts to renewable energy and energy efficiency. The measure itself would also cut the department's Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Office by about $466 million, or 13%, compared with what it was given in last year's appropriations bill. And Republicans are looking at even greater cuts. And Republicans are looking at even greater cuts, bringing the total cuts for the office to about 42%. It would also rescind water regulations implemented by the Biden administration. The bill is one of 12 annual funding bills that House Republicans have crafted over the past several months. The party, which had already passed four partisan funding bills prior to October, now aims to pass the remaining seven funding bills in the coming weeks. In a letter to GOP colleagues ahead of securing the top gavel, Mike Johnson offered a plan for the conference. In a letter to GOP colleagues ahead of securing the top gavel, Mike Johnson offered a plan for the conference to pass its remaining funding bills by mid-November, while proposing another stopgap funding bill through the end of this year, in the likely event that one is needed. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on this new bill? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. To say thank you for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearest friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. The winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Miriam Torres Santiago and Alyssa Ramos. Congratulations, my dearest friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or friends, please message me on my Facebook page. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.